Hi there, my name is Barbie Angel. I'm with Lingua Musica, where music is the common tongue. And we are here today with David Lamott. Um, David Lamott is a, has been a, wow, traveling performer, <laughs> singer, songwriter, award-winning singer, songwriter, um, and uh, does variety of work with, um, as a peace activist and with um, his nonprofit organization, Peg Partners, based out of Guatemala, um, that builds schools and libraries down there. Um, David, what are you? Uh, what are you most passionate about? <laughs> it's a long list. Um, how much tape yes. do you have there? <laughs> it's, um, there are a lot of things that I'm, I'm jazzed about. I guess what I'm working on, I'll narrow it down to what I'm working on, sort of, okay. um, in terms of my passion. Um, I used to say that I play music because it's the best way I know how to connect people, uh, the best way I know to connect people, and I, if I could ever find a better way, I would do that. And um, so in recent years, I have been experimenting with some other paths, you know, I've been um, studying a bit, went down to Australia and did this master's degree in peace and conflict resolution work. Um, and I've found some other ways to connect people that I think are really important. And I also really honor the fact that music is a way to connect people that is irreplicable in any other way. That there, there's something in the nature of music that connects us in ways that we can't explain. And I'm always fascinated by things I can't explain. You know, it's the stuff that that is mysterious that I want to stand closest to. You know, so music's kind of like that for me. I I still don't get it after all these years of trying to plink away. I I'm still baffled and mystified by the magic that's inherent in it. As we say at Lingua Musica, it's the common tongue. It's the common tongue. Yes. It is. Um, yeah. And it's fascinating. You know, I still find the mystery, the fact that you can play an instrumental piece of music to a group of a hundred people and give them a multiple choice questionnaire and ask them to identify the emotion associated with that piece of music and find that you'll have broad agreement not complete, but broad agreement. How is it that this little pattern of frequencies overlapping with each other in certain patterns, that that actually carries emotion? But it absolutely does. And I find that really fascinating. So I'm passionate about that. And I'm also passionate about, um, you know, it sounds cheesy and trite, but the truth is I'm passionate about trying to make the world a better place and trying to empower other people to do that. Um, I think there are a lot of good folks out there who really want to have a positive impact and have bought into the myth that they can't, that they're too small and that they can't have an impact. And that's me too on many days, you know, I wake up feeling that way. And I think we have to remind each other and ourselves that that's not true. And I've been, in recent years in particular, particularly interested in sort of methodically challenging the mythology about how things change and how they don't. Because I think we tend to believe a lot of things as a culture that simply aren't true in terms of what, how things come to pass. You know? Yeah, I see you coming at this from a lot of different angles and just knowing you personally and knowing how active you've always been in, in politics and, mm -hmm. and um, uh, not just on a broad scale, but in your own community, wherever that may be. Mm -hmm. um, is there, are there more options there? Are there, are there things you've discovered that are better ways to go about it than others? Yeah, I mean, I think there are better ways to go about it than others in any given situation. There aren't right answers and wrong answers, but there are some ways that I, I feel better about than others. Um, but I don't think those are formulaic. I think they really depend on the situation. And it's touchy stuff when you're speaking out politically and you're, you're engaging areas of conflict in society. I mean, it's the irony of peace work that it it requires you to step directly toward conflict, not away from conflict. You know, it's piecework that involves running away isn't work at all, and it's not peace at all. Um, I got to spend some time with the civil rights hero, John Lewis, um, a couple of years ago. Spent a couple of hours talking with him, and one of the things he said in that time that really resonated for me, he said, well, he started the sentence by saying, well, Dr. King used to say to me, <laughs> Like any sentence that starts that way, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. But he said, um, you know, Dr. King used to say to me, uh, sometimes you have to turn the world upside down in order to set it right. And the fact is that peace isn't the absence of conflict. 
conflict is often necessary on the way to justice, and justice is integral to peace. So it's not about not having conflict, it's about doing conflict in ways that are constructive rather than ways that are destructive. And so um, it's a touchy line. It, on the one hand, I think every citizen has an obligation to speak out from what they believe about, but whether, whether it's what I believe or not, I think folks have an obligation as citizens in a democracy to speak out. At the same time, I think we have a deep obligation to listen to each other. And when we speak out, to speak out respectfully and to acknowledge that we don't have all the answers and that we've been, you know, from speaking for myself, I've been profoundly wrong in my life about some stuff, you know, and so it, it would I be... Have to. Yeah, have you? No <laughs> yeah. kidding. Same so that. it would be unwise of me, I think, to assume that I'm not wrong about anything now. And given that, I need to be respectful and humble in how I present things. At the same time, you need to not be immobilized by the idea that you might be wrong, you know. I like questions a lot more than I like answers. I like to raise questions with my songs and, and with stories and such. And I like to empower people. I like to challenge the, that mythology of powerlessness, as I, as I said earlier. Um, I think it's, I think it's, it's widespread and it's problematic because it's really not true. People have a lot more power than they realize. And so I want, I want folks to feel safe to dis disagree with me, and I want them to be interested in what I have to say as I am interested in what they have to say. What I would hate to have happen is to be perceived in a certain kind of political context as an artist so that only people who already agree with me come to my shows. I'm really hoping to make good art, you know, and, and the art is not a vehicle, it's not a means to an end of, to some ideology. It's just a way to connect people. And I think that connecting people matters, and, and it's true. I mean, it, it matters. I'm not interested in giving people good news that isn't true, making them feel better in ways that are deceptive. What I am interested in doing is stripping away some of the fear and the despair that doesn't actually belong, you know? And, and, I, and I think that, um, you, I know you know what I'm talking about when I say, you know, there are moments at concerts sometimes, every once in a while I've gotten to experience this when I'm the one on stage, but I've also experienced it plenty when I'm in the audience. There are moments when everybody gets swept up in this thing and, and you almost become an aggregate person. You know, everybody's just, you know that there's nobody in the room who feels any differently from everybody else in the room because it's just too big, you're swept exactly. up in it. And people who don't get the arts would say, that's a lovely feeling, but it's not true. It's fluff, and it wears off, and then you get back to your real life. And I say just the opposite. I mean, I think from a kind of spiritual perspective, I guess, I believe that that sense of connectedness is what is true. And the sense of isolation that we mostly walk around with, that's the lie. And that makes art holy to me, no matter what the art is about. If it connects people in a way that's fundamentally true, that's worthwhile. Just that sense of connection, because it's real. And, and so that, that matters to me. So I want to be making good art. And good art, I think, is evocative more than it's instructive. So that's to say that when it, when it has power, when it moves people, is when it touches on their experience, when it's not just about my experience. Absolutely. So you leave spaces in your art for other people to weave their lives into it. And that's when it takes on meaning. But if, you, if I can move people, I feel really good about that and really grateful to be part of that flow. To me, when I found out that you were going to be performing in New York City, in Manhattan, on the 10th anniversary of 9-11, I thought, there is no better person to do this, because you would have such an understanding of, of your responsibility and your, um, your options. And but I'm just deeply honored to be invited to be a part of that conversation on such a raw occasion. It's, um, you're right that I'm I'm real I'm, I'm terribly conscious of the the responsibility that you have as an artist um, in times like that, and I'm certainly not going to be in a place to tell anybody how they should feel or um, oh, not. you know uh, I want to tread really lightly on this massive amount of pain that's there. At the same time, you know. I, I want to carefully ask some questions about how we move forward now, you know, 10 years later. Um, what have we learned from this? And, and um, did, we, did we learn the right things? Did we learn things that are productive? Or did we learn things that are destructive? And, um, 
And, and I'm honored to be invited into that conversation, for sure. I'm trying to do it carefully, but at the same time, not be immobilized by my own concerns about screwing it up. I think, um, I think as a culture, we're really obsessed with uh, fear of getting it wrong. And for a, lot of the, for a lot of us, a lot of the time, that keeps us from doing anything at all. And honestly, while we do need to pay attention to bad models, we do need to pay attention to the ways we mess it up, sometimes we can make a bigger mess than we started with. I think the truth is apathy is a much bigger problem than that. There's so many more people who want to be helpful and could be helpful if they would show up, but are immobilized by their fear of doing it wrong and don't show up. And, and that's who I'm trying to speak to mostly. And you speak as somebody who feels that you do it wrong from time to time as well? Yeah, daily, which, actually. Which yeah. I, I think the, yeah. the aspect of being someone who, who does teach on so many levels and, and has these conversations, um, to know that you don't know everything, I think, is a, and that you are always seeking to learn more, I think, is a, a valid and, uh, um, perspective that I, I respect quite Thank a bit. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So excellent. Well, thank you very much to David Lamott. Really and to please you. visit his website at www.davidlamott.com. L A M O T T E. And you can find out more about his, all of his work and Peg Partners, his nonprofit organization, um, his touring schedule. And you can find out more about us at www linguamusicalive.com. Thank you, and thank you. All right.